friends and welcome to the Madhouse. I'm Josh and today is Wednesday but I'm going to be very busy in the next few days. Um, so this is going to go up on Friday. I don't have time to do a proper video. I was off for weeks and I have a lot of stuff to catch up on so this will be quick and edited as quickly as it could possibly be as well. You may remember if you've not been at the bottom of a pit for the past week that the Oscars happened recently and they were, uh, well, everywhere. You know that um, Brie Larson won Best Actress for her portrayal in Room, which was well deserved, that Eddie Redmayne did not win Best Actor for his performance in The Danish Girl, though his co-star, the name of whom currently escapes me, won Best Supporting Actress. The best actor, in fact, went to Leonardo DiCaprio now. I wasn't too fussed about the Revenant. Revenge stories bore me. I prefer grand stories of supervillain kind of revenge, where they decide to blow up the moon because someone ran over their dog when they were 12. Not stories where someone's family and they have been hurt so they're going to hunt down the person who did it. It bores me. It's why I can't stand the Count of Monte Cristo. But for me, the biggest and probably best film that was nominated and won was Inside Out, which won Best Animated Picture, which was utterly deserved. So I'm going to do the Inside Out book tag. I'm going to say I must have my Vika from One Book One Review because she did the tag last year and said if you have seen the film or haven't seen it yet and really want to see it, you can go ahead and do it. I've seen the film at least six times, possibly a bit more twice in the cinema, and absolutely loved it every time, despite it being about feelings which are not my strong suit whatsoever. Now the tag is very simple, there are five questions, one for each of the five emotions, so that's joy, disgust, fear, sadness and anger. So question number one, joy, which book brings you the most joy, for which I'm going to have to say hands down Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It's not the first Harry Potter book I read, because that was actually The Prisoner of Azkaban. I was seven years old, I think. I'd already seen the films of Philosopher's Stone and Chamber of Secrets, and at the time I didn't realise there would be a difference, so I didn't think I needed to read it. So I went straight on to the third book, and I absolutely loved that, and then went back to Philosopher's Stone, because it was brilliant, and knew I'd love it, and I still get the same joy every time I pick up Philosopher's Stone then, well now as I did then, although I suppose it's slightly different because I can understand the characters more and number two, disgust. Which book grossed you out the most? Well in terms of being disgusting, um, I don't know. I mean Mein Kampf is disgusting but not in the way this question is asking. I'm going to have to say Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro, which is not gory or bloody or despicable in the way of my comfort, but it's utterly monstrous all the same. Because, well, it, it's a truly marvellous piece of writing, absolutely beautiful, and it's disturbing. It's set in an alternate world where people are grown cloned specifically for the purpose of providing organ transplants for ordinary people. They live their entire lives believing this to be normal, this to be natural, raised essentially to be, well, organ farms. They don't question this and it, it, it's horrifying and I, 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 I can't talk about it right now, it's just Every time I've tried to read it since the, that first time when I put it down, I can't continue. Again, it, it just gets to me too much. Number three. Which book scared you more than anything? Well, I don't know. I, I don't get scared easily. The Bible's kind of scary, but mostly just because people believe it's true. I mean, there's some parts in it which are true, and some that are really good, and then there are others' revelations, which is just lunacy. Um, so I'm go instead going to say The Dead House by Dawn Kurtigitz. Dawn, if you're watching this, you are a sick, sick, sick woman. You need help, and possibly a writing award. <laughs> 
It's so creepy. I, you don't know whether they're really possessed by demons or if she's really mad or whether she's a, it's a combination of the two. It's fantastic and horrifying. Number four, Sadness. Which book made you cry the hardest? The Shepherd's Crown by Sir Terry Pratchett. It's not the best of the Discworld books, but it made me cry for hours. I was testing it through it, and just by the end of chapter two, I could not stop the tears. By the end of the novel as a whole, it was marvelous. It made me cry, I, it made me laugh as well, but the tears, I, I, well, it was a fitting end to both Discworld and to a certain character and a fitting tribute to Sir Terry as well. It was marvellous. And number five, Anger. Which book pissed you off? Well, there was the Bible, there was Mein Kampf, there was the Communist Manifesto, but that's not really what's being asked. That's an entirely different sort of anger. And the Communist Manifesto was out of frustration than any, more than anything else. Instead, I'm going to go for a series rather than the whole thing, and that is the Mortal Engines and Fever Crumb series by Philip Reeve. I counted those as the same thing because Philip Fever Crumb is a prequel to Mortal Engines, and essentially it's a story of a post-apocalyptic world in which, well, the apocalypse has happened obviously, it's not like a biblical apocalypse, it's a horrible nuclear war where the world as we know it has destroyed itself and then hundreds and thousands of years in the future they start to rebuild and they build cities on wheels to chase one another and they start to destroy the world all over again in fever crumb as well one character godshawk or godshawk i'm never sure how to say that name he is monstrous he's not he's not hu human he's um Part of a group called the Spackle, I believe. Um, they call themselves Homo Superior, which already tells you what kind of character this is. And he treats human beings as slaves. He commissions a giant statue of himself, which never got finished, but the head itself is... It later serves as the... What's that word? Scaffolding for a city. The chassis, actually, not scaffolding. He saves his granddaughter's life by implanting a computer in her brain, a computer that contains an entire copy of his mind. So as long as she survives, so does he. He used his granddaughter as a backup for his brain, as an insurance policy in case something happened to him. Th that's monstrous. No, just no. And now for a bonus question that I'm going to add, Bing Bong, name a book or series or character that sparked your imagination. Well, I could obviously say Discworld for this or Harry Potter, but instead, Al, I am going to say Philip K. Dick's Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Because this sparked off an idea for a, well, what was initially a short story of mine, but is now expanding out into a full novel based around the idea of artificial intelligence and its necessity in the expansion of the human race and how it would interact with other future technological developments such as uh, matter manipulation, teleportation and well I'm loving the idea. I'm not you may not see how you get from Duando's dream of electric sheep to that but I see it and that's why it's important, and that's why it works. Also, can we just talk about how Bing Bong is adorable? Just, who knows, who's your friend who likes to play Bing Bong, Bing Bong? Uh, no, I'm going to stop now. I hope this wasn't too disorienting or distracting for you. I have never used a selfie stick like this before, and I feel slightly despicable for having bought one, but it's also quite helpful. If you're interested in buying any of these books, I would really appreciate it if you would use my book depository affiliate link because, I've said before, I'm saving to study in Germany later this year, actually. My God, time is frightening. And I would really appreciate any and all help you might be able to give because if you're going to buy the book anyway, why not help someone else? If you have any particular thoughts about any of these books or about Inside Out or any of the films that 
were nominated for Oscars, feel free to tell me about them because I love discussions like this. Until next time, tatty bye.